Good morning, everybody. <laughs> it's great to be here and see you. Like, this is so, I might even cry. <laughs> um, it's so great to see everybody in person and to be back here. So thank you guys for coming this morning. I just wanted to hold this up here in case I forget later. This is a QR code. It's to a trend sheet that's going to give you a lot of the statistics you're going to see today. So there's one out by the coffee table. There's this one I can, I'm going to hand it to Earl here. You can, if someone wants to kind of grab that, it'll be down here. And then we have like some up in our booth. So again, QR code, you'll get the trend sheet. We're trying to be really COVID friendly here. So um, <clears throat> how many of you guys have attended this before? Like show of hands. Okay, so it's always about half the room. So you guys, you guys that have attended know what's going to happen. It'll be a tiny bit different today. You probably haven't seen Matt Powell walking around the room, and that's because we still have a travel ban in our, at our company, and so that will be lifted at the end of August. But since Matt couldn't be here, he recorded his part of the presentation. So what I'm going to do right now is just take you... I will in a second. I need to get the clicker thing. Um, i got to walk over here and get the clicker, but I'm just going to give you a couple of introductions. Then we'll have Matt play his video, and then I'm going to kind of take you guys into a deeper dive of what's happening in outdoor specialty, um, really what's selling, what's not selling, top sellers, et cetera. So let me find the clicker, and uh, we'll kind of move on here. So we're just going to give you kind of a quick about NPD, because it'll help you understand some of the data you're going to see. NPD tracks consumer purchasing behavior. We track it globally. We track it across a number of countries and a number of different industries. So really what we do is we take the data, the tracking data, then we add kind of a layer of analytics, and then the expertise, the insights. So you're going to get insights from Matt. So it's taking that data and then really making it come alive. Um, and then I just thought I'd show you we do track in many different countries many different things. So where you see sports, um, that's where we track sports. So we have lots of different industries. I thought I'd give you a flavor of the industries. And then the so what to this. And I'm kind of looking around the room and I can't see with the lights, but is Dirk Sorensen here? Is he in the room? All right, Dirk, wave your hand, arms, jump up and down. Guys, Dirk is part of our analyst team, our, our insights team at NPD. Um, and it's really great to talk to him. One of the greatest things about NPD, and it became so apparent during COVID, is because we track all these industries, we could literally understand when footwear and apparel wasn't selling, what was selling. Was it, was it hair grooming products? Was it bread makers? Was it fitness machines and sports? So, this gave us this huge perspective. And so Dirk works and talks to every day with the other analysts at NPD. So talk to Dirk if you've got questions. He'll be in our booth for the next two days. Um, and, but he can really help give you those perspectives because it really became important where we were spending our money as Americans and where we weren't. <clears throat> now in sports, you're going to hear a lot of different categories. We're going to look at a lot of different things today. So I just thought I'd remind you, this is what we track in sports. We track apparel, footwear, equipment, and accessories. We're going to primarily talk almost 100% today about the US sales. Um, but we're looking across these categories. We kind of put them in buckets. Golf, fitness, outdoor, cycling, run, et cetera. So there's, there's paddle sports. So we're able to really show you across different sports categories. And I'll give a little announcement, very exciting. We are going to track the fishing business starting in September. So we'll have fishing um, products, and we'll be able to look at that. Now, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to play Matt's video. It's about 20 minutes long, and then I'll come up and we'll deep dive into outdoor specialty. Hello, this is Matt Powell, and welcome to our uh, semi-annual Outdoor Retailer Sports Industry Recap. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, data on the sports industry in the United States for 
the period of January through May. Um, I'm going to take you through these industries at a relatively high level. Uh, and then Julia Day is going to follow up with a more in-depth, uh, detailed view into the outdoor industry. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm uh, Matt Powell, as I said. I've been in the retail business for nearly 50 years. Uh, I've been doing research on the sports industry for more than 20. been with NPD now nearly seven years, where I am the senior industry advisor for sports. Um, I do these kinds of presentations often, um, I'm actually more now that I'm not traveling. Um, and uh, have a few people connected to me on LinkedIn. If you are interested in being notified when I write a blog, uh, if you link me on LinkedIn, I will add you to the uh, distribution. But let's take a look at what some of the big things that have been happening in the US um, uh, in terms of the sports uh, retail business. This is um, showing the growth of direct to consumer e-commerce um, over the last 12 months. The green bar here is uh, the manufacturer's uh, full price stores and their e-commerce business. The light blue bar is the manufacturer outlet store and the navy bar is their sales through other distribution. And you can see these four brands that we picked were just representative of the total, um, how much their uh, uh, direct consumer uh, e-commerce business has accelerated over the last 12 months. Um, Many of them saw their outlet business soften uh, because those outlets had to be closed uh, during the pandemic. Uh, and that's pr primarily why those numbers were negative. Um, and as opposed to last year, we are now beginning to see growth again with uh, their wholesale partners. But the real message here is that every brand has got a pedal to the metal in terms of growing their e-commerce business. Uh, and uh, to some extent, it's at the expense of their wholesale partners. Um, our uh, survey client, uh, Civic Science, um, who does uh, weekly and monthly surveys, uh, asks this question every month of the recipients of how often do you exercise? And you can see that um, during the pandemic for the first time, more people said they exercise several times a week than those who said they never exercised at all. Uh, those numbers switched back a little bit during the winter, but now have emerged again with people saying that they are exercising uh, several times a week. It exceeds those who say they never exercise. Um, we think this really speaks to uh, an environment that's going to be very good for the sports and, and outdoor industry. Uh, the consumers are more concerned about healthy living than ever. And um, I think that's going to manifest itself in them doing fitness activities. Uh, and that's an opportunity for, for us to leverage that. Gym attendance continues to be down um, and uh, no, no near-term sign of that coming back. Um, Civic Science also asked this question of their uh, co correspondents uh, earlier in the year. Uh, what sports or activities do you plan on doing more of in 21 than you did in 20? 48% of people said they're going to hike or walk more than they did uh, the previous year. Another 19% say they're going to do other outdoor activities, uh, kayaking and camping and so forth. 13% uh, of people said they were going to cycle outdoors. 11% said they were going to play more golf. 10% said they were going to run more. So uh, again, we think the environment here is really good for, uh, for the sports industry. Uh, when we look at it by uh, wearer segment, um, we see that women are favoring hiking and walking and at-home fitness, where men are favoring outdoor sports, golf, and running. Uh, E-commerce uh, business surged dur during the pandemic. We moved from 26% um, during the first uh, five months of the year in 19 to 41% in athletic footwear uh, and saw a similar increase in uh, active wear. Um, those numbers are holding up pretty well. Um, we've taken a small step backwards, but I'm going to bet by the end of the year that we are pretty much in line with the levels that we achieved in, um, in 2020. Um, we moved uh, progress here three to five years in three to five months. Uh, and uh, I think that we will continue to see uh, march towards more e-commerce. Um, uh, certainly, this is being partly driven by the direct consumer consum uh, uh, customers who are buying from the brands directly, uh, but also uh, retailers are, are ramping up their um, 
their uh, e-commerce business. And I think the one thing that you want to point out here is that uh, it's really imperative now that every retailer have an e-commerce presence of some kind. Uh, you cannot uh, ignore uh, when it's uh, ignore this phenomenon when it's as large as it is. And you can see that over two years, uh, e-commerce business in athletic footwear grew 69% and decline and physical stores declined five in uh, active wear. Uh, e-commerce sales grew 73% in over two years, whereas uh, the physical stores only grew 17. Um, we're going to take you through some of the uh, non-outdoor categories and just talk about the environment for uh, sports. We see here, and by the way, most of the comparisons that I'm going to have going forward here are comparing 2021 to 2019. Um, we think 2019 is a much more stable comparison. Uh, and so uh, I may make some commentary around comparisons to 20, but for the most part, the comparisons will be the 2019. Athletic footwear sales through the first five months of the year are up 22% uh, compared to 2019. Average selling price is up 13%. And this is a phenomenon we're seeing across all of our industries at NPD, um, where average selling prices have, have really gone up during the pandemic. Um, I think this is driven by two factors. One, uh, if you had a job during the pandemic, you likely had more money in your pocket, uh, simply because you weren't spending money on experiences. You weren't going to restaurants, you weren't going to movies, you weren't going to sporting events, um, you weren't going on vacation. And so that left people with more disposable income, and I think they splurged a little bit. Number two, um, with the uh, uh, logistics issues that we're having, uh, inventories are well below uh, normal levels, and uh, brands and retailers are not finding they have to be as promotional as they have been in the past in order to liquidate an inventory. So uh, I think both of those things drove sales upwards. When we look at the top selling uh, categories in uh, athletic footwear, uh, <clears throat> sport lifestyle footwear grew 26%. This includes the retro uh, styles. Uh, running was up 17%. Um, uh, hiking and trekking up 20, walking up 39, 35. So uh, uh, again, the, some of the activities we talked about earlier uh, really starting to pan out. Um, the brands that uh, overperformed the market, uh, Jordan, um, uh, Skechers, uh, Brooks, Puma, um, and the brands that underperformed uh, uh, Nike, uh, Adidas, and so forth. Running sales grew 17% through the first five months. Men, ha men have about 44% of the total and only grew 12%. Women have about 42% of the total and grew 21%. Um, and I think this, again, speaks to the opportunity that we face in our industry for the women's business uh, to, to really make sure we're focusing on that. Uh, Nike continues to lose share. Sales were down 9% uh, 900 basis points compared to 2019. Uh, Nike lost 1,400 basis points in share in women's, um, which propelled Brooks into the number one position for women's performance running shoes. Other brands that lost share were Adidas, Fila, and Saucony. Um, Brooks had the biggest gain, 600 basis points. Hoka and On also saw nice gains. The hiking business was up 20% through the first five months of the year. Men hold 70% of the volume here, but sales only grew 15%. Women hold 26% of the volume, but sales grew 37%. Uh, and I think, again, this speaks to the opportunity around women's hiking, uh, it, that it's growing twice as fast as men's uh, and has a very disproportionate share um, and big, big opportunity to get after the women's business. Um, Merrill has 19% share, but those, that was lost about 400 basis points versus 2019 volume. And the brands that are gaining, uh, Solomon, Skechers, Columbia, and that's guess where they're gaining? They're gaining with women. Uh, this is looking at uh, the three wearer segments, all categories combined. And you can see, again, the women's piece of the business is growing faster than the men's. Um, but there's a huge gap here between the size of the men's market and the size of the women's market. In my opinion, the women's business ought to be as large as the men's business. So this remains a big opportunity. In active apparel, compared to 2019, uh, sales are up 27% for the first five months of the year. Average selling price is only up 1% here, though, and that's really because of outerwear. Outerwear carries the highest ticket in, in uh, active wear, and the outerwear business is not good, uh, and that's dragging down average selling prices across the board. Um, you can see that by month, we saw a nice growth in uh, active apparel uh, compared to 2019. 
Um, and most classes were up double digits um, versus a year ago, two years ago. Uh, knit shirts and pants both grew strongly. The shorts business was up more than 50%. The outerwear business, I'm sorry, the uh, sweatshirt business was up nearly 50%. Outerwear down 6%. And the underwear business continues to be quite strong. This was a phenomenon we saw during the pandemic and that has continued. Um, we aggregate all the retailers' private labels, private brands as if they were one and call it private label. That's the largest brand in the space. So sales grew 50%. Uh, continuing to grow faster than um, than the rest of the industry. Uh, <clears throat> Nike sales up 23, uh, Hanes uh, up 76, Champion up 75%, uh, Reebok and, and Puma both having a good run here as well. Uh, and then by wearer segment, um, uh, men's and women's grew about the same, but again, we have that gap we talked about between men's and women's. In team sports, uh, sales up 49% compared to 2019. Average selling price is up 20%. Um, golf is the largest business and sales here were up 74%. Um, baseball and soccer both showed nice increases. If you remember a year ago, many states closed their uh, school systems and shut down their spring sports season. Um, and so we're up against a very easy comparison there. Uh, football was up big in the spring. Uh, many states postponed their football season from last fall to this spring, consequently driving that number up. Um, racket sports business like golf uh, are being driven, I think, by a desire to stay fit and uh, uh, to remain socially distant. Um, and then finally, the combat and wrestling business is up really big, uh, mostly driven by punching bags. And I think we'd all agree that during the uh, pandemic, we wished we had a punching bag. Home fitness up 122%. Average selling price is up 42%. Uh, every every category growing, um, and uh, uh, we're we're seeing uh, just sen sensational growth here. We lately we've seen some flattening out uh, against 20 numbers, um, but uh, I still think we're going to end up the year with uh, an increase. Um, cycling. Uh, again, up 20, 68%. Average selling price is up 33. Um, and again, the categories that grew best against 19, mountain bikes up 94%, electric bikes up four times, uh, kids' bikes good. Uh, really, again, across the board, we're seeing nice increases here. And then finally, the outdoor industry, uh, sales up 18% for the year, uh, first five months. Average selling price is up 33%. Um, again, the growth really has been pretty solid. February was a little disappointing, but i um, uh, been seeing nice growth since then. If you recall last year, many parks were closed, state parks and national parks were closed early on in the pandemic. Um, and we virtually missed the entire spring camping and hiking season. And we're, we're capturing some of that back now. Um, <clears throat> accessories is the only category that is below 19 levels. This is mostly being driven by weakness in the beverage uh, area, uh, beverage container area, and in backpacks. Uh, with people not commuting, you don't need a, 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 your own beverage container. Uh, with kids not being in school, you don't need backpacks. So those businesses both really challenge. Uh, apparel business is good, um, not as good as maybe we'd liked it to be. But outerwear was still pretty challenged, uh, but the equipment business was quite strong, up 33%. And then when we look at it by channel, uh, we see that uh, uh, the equipment business was good in outdoor specialty, but that's the only category that was good. Overall sales in outdoor specialty down 13%, but sports specialty e-commerce uh, grew 12%. Um, uh, uh, and very shortly, sports specialty e-commerce is going to be larger than the outdoor specialty category. And again, I, I cannot urge the, the uh, outdoor specialists enough to make sure that you have an e-commerce presence. Um, and uh, uh, otherwise you're going to be missing out on a significant uh, chunk of business. Um, several of the outdoor sports categories did well during the pandemic. Uh, things that about backyard oriented in particular did well, camp chairs, uh, hard-sided coolers. Um, the kayak business was good on social distancing, uh, hiking footwear, again, people trying to get outside and, uh, and <clears throat> walk for health. Um, uh, so these are, uh, I think, a, a, maybe a little bit less serious uh, consumer, uh, but certainly a consumer who wanted to uh, participate in the outdoors. Um, 
within the classes, the top classes, only outerwear and backpacks were down. Um, all others were uh, up or at par. Um, we're seeing national park visits on the rise. Uh, here in Maine, Acadia is, uh, is just at the breaking point. Uh, uh, far too many uh, people to wanting to get out uh, to Acadia uh, than the park can handle. Uh, and they're talking about instituting new rules to, uh, to get uh, to control the crowds. But visitation um, for April, May this year versus a year ago, up 74% at Acadia. Um, and again, uh, tremendous increases across the board in, uh, in national parks. Um, but one of the points that I've made earlier and I want to reiterate is that this interest that we're seeing, this surge that we're seeing is not elites. These are no, there's not suddenly that many more uh, hardcore outdoor enthusiasts com coming out of the woodwork. Most of the increases we're seeing are with beginners. And our industry has never been particularly welcoming to beginners. And I think we, it's time for a real reassessment of how we want to attack uh, this new consumer. Um, I think if we give them a more welcoming environment, if we take care of them and don't oversell them product, um, we will be able to keep them as customers. Uh, but I, I fear that we're, we're going to shun them like we have in the past, and uh, uh, that won't be good for business. As I mentioned, the backyard business continues to thrive. People are, still see their home as their sanctuary, as their safe place, uh, and they're extending their home into the backyard. So again, all through last year, the cooler business, the grill business, the outdoor furniture business, hammock business, all very, very good. Uh, grills and smoker sales up 137%. Um, and the top brands in the market in the grill category, Weber up 77 and Blackstone up 124. So think about your assortments and how you dial it down to being more of a beginner entry level and, uh, and backyard play as opposed to a three week hike in. One of the other things I want to alert you to is that many of the brands in the home industry are looking to grow in the outdoor space. Um, our, my colleague who manages the home business for us uh, tells me that uh, it's the number one topic that people are talking about in the, uh, in the home industry. It's how to get some of this outdoor space. And we're seeing brands that previously had not made uh, uh, outdoor equipment or things that are usable outdoors are now beginning to do so. Um, so we can expect that uh, this, this space is going to get more competitive um, and uh, time for us to, to uh, make a moat and try to protect our, uh, our, our businesses. Let me take you through my projections for the second half, and then I'm going to turn it over to Julia to uh, uh, walk you through the outdoor industry in more detail. Um, we're already seeing consumers are slow to, to return to malls. The recent uh, CDC directive on people wearing masks again inside is not going to help people returning to malls. Um, and uh, we can expect that, that that business will remain challenged. That's going to help us reset e-commerce to a new higher level. Uh, and I think that uh, we're going to see e-commerce become even more important uh, than it is already. Um, as I mentioned, we fully believe that there's a new commitment on the part of the consumer to healthy living and wellness. Uh, and uh, certainly the outdoor industry can be a part of the helping deliver that. Uh, but we need to understand what our niche is there and how to, how to execute against it. Social distancing will remain important. Again, I think this new CDC directive uh, indicates that, and we're going to see more and more people uh, seeking out activities that they can do to stay fit and remain socially distant at the same time. The sales trends are going to be really lumpy, particularly when we try to compare ourselves to 2020. Uh, that's why we were recommending that we compare it to 2019, which would give us a bit more of a stable platform. Um, the uh, stimulus checks, the child tax credit checks that have started to go out seem to be lifting the business, at least in, in, part, in parts. Uh, the athletic shoe business, for instance, got a lot better um, as soon as those checks came out. I uh, have not seen the same movement in the outdoor, uh, but it's early yet. And uh, uh, that's going to put a lot of extra money into the marketplace. It's something like over the course of a year of $100 and $60 billion in additional income that's going to go into the market. So we should expect to see some lift out of that. I think in footwear running, trail running, and hiking are all going to be strong. I think the outdoor equipment business remains good. Um, the uh, the uh, cycling, home, fitness, golf, and uh, team sports businesses should be bright spots as well. Uh, and overall, uh, 
I think it's going to be a good year for sports retail, uh, but not a great uh, second half. So thank you. And uh, here's Julia. Thank you, Matt. Um, he's up in Maine, and I know he's thinking of us right now. So I'm going to do a quick deep dive just to get you into the kind of the core of the outdoor business. We're going to talk about outdoor specialty stores, both their brick and mortar and their e-commerce business. And we're going to talk about sporting goods retailers. So also, Matt showed you the first half, so the first five months of the year. We're going to look at a rolling 12 months ending May 2021. So where he was looking January through May, we're going to look at a rolling 12 so we can get some category sizes and some year-over-year -year growth. Um, for those of you that don't know me, those of the, you that do, sorry, I'm going to just have to back up. This is my favorite, um, my favorite one-second video. So I managed to get to Cuba for the third time this year. I mean, traveling to Cuba in the middle of COVID was, was pretty horrific. I've never done so much work to get there to go fishing, but it was um, very spectacular. And we had an awesome time tarpon fishing. So if you don't know me, fly fishing is my thing, whether it's fresh or salt water. What we're going to look right now is sports industry trends. Um, and we're going to kind of take a high level so Matt gave us a really, really high level. Now we're going to take really kind of this high level, rolling 12 months, um, the fitness business up. This is home fitness equipment, whether it's machines or yoga, but that's up 63%. The team sports business is up 40% overall year over year. Cycling business up 30%. Outdoor equipment, so this is really camping equipment, up 30%. And then we're looking at athletic footwear and apparel really catching up this year and catching up quickly. This is an interesting perspective because you're looking at the you're looking at year over year and then year over two years ago. As Matt said, like looking back to 2019, what happened was we saw the outdoor equipment, we saw golf equipment, racket sports growing, we saw bikes growing, we saw fitness equipment last year and we said, is that really gonna be sustainable into this year? What this is showing you there, the blue bar is year over year, and then the green bar is two years ago. So you can see that it's, ex it's almost accelerated in a number of categories, where apparel and footwear are catching up now. So that was you know, very kind of laggard in the last year. This, any of us at NPD and sports could talk to you for two hours about this slide. What this is, it's a really interesting perspective. This is taking all the categories, putting them together, and this is absolute dollar volume change. So where Matt talked about the sport leisure footwear, basketball inspired shoes grew by $1.5 billion year over year, absolute dollar volume change. Sweatshirts, almost a billion dollars. Running inspired, so that's not performance running, but that's running inspired shoes, grew. Active shorts, golf balls, active pants, road running, so that's your performance running shoes. Um, underwear, socks, then we get to the equipment, golf, the full sets of uh, golf clubs, golf drivers, irons, golf balls, golf shoes is at the very bottom of that. So we, across all sports, we looked at that absolute dollar volume change, and those are some huge swings. Now we look at what declined. What declined, I mean, in, in summary, outerwear, backpacks, outerwear and backpacks. Really, um, water bottles, because again, school was closed, we weren't traveling as much, so, so those did suffer in there. This also puts into perspective, this is absolute dollar volume change across all sports equipment, apparel, accessories. So we look at that, and when you see, I'll show you some, some, a couple golf stats later, but Callaway grew by $500 million year over year. And you can see there's, there's other golf companies up there. Now we're going to take it down to the core of the specialty business. And so when we look at this, we're looking at IBD, which is bike specialty. Um, independent bike dealers. We're looking at outdoor specialty and outdoor specialty e-com, so we're looking the sum of that, and snow specialty and snow specialty e-com. So really the brick and mortar and the e-com, we're, we're putting that together. We're able to also tear it apart and pull it apart so we can, we can look at it separately. Um, so you're looking at the specialty business up 9%, 
The bike specialty business up 33%. Snow's up 1%, but if we were to take that just to um, winter sports equipment, so skis, snowboards, Nordic, um, AT, you're looking at a 30-some percent growth there. So here, if we kind of say, what is the core outdoor business? The core outdoor business are outdoor specialty stores and their e-commerce component, sporting goods stores, um, and then your, your specialist retailers from REI to Cabela's, Bass Pro, et cetera. The core business across apparel, footwear, equipment, and accessories is 24.8 billion. The business is up 20% year over year. In dollars, it's up 12% in units, and the average price increase is up 7%. So the core business, I mean, we should all just take a minute and celebrate, right? Because last March, I think a lot of us were like, are we even going to be here by April? Are we going to be even be here by May? And are certainly we going to make it to 2021? There's probably some of us that were like, I don't know if we're going to make it. And so we're back here. We've got consumers buying products. So when we look at this, Athletic specialty, sporting goods, this is their brick and mortar and their e-com. I can't toss that apart. So that's up 25% in total. Where we can take it apart in specialty, we can look at the e-commerce portion of outdoor specialty and the brick and mortar. When we combine it, there's your 9% increase there. So what's the reality? I mean, the reality, we're all looking at a supply chain problem right now, right? High demand, low inventory buying, consumers buying, are stronger than ever. Um, as Matt showed you, online is growing and it's growing very quickly. You can also see from just going back there, again, as consumers, we, and, and we're all consumers, we learned, we changed our habits. We learned new habits and new pathways to getting what we need. But what we do know is that consumers have decidedly said, I want to be active, I want to be outdoors, social distancing, family time, outdoor adventure, et cetera. And really think about this concept of a whole new customer because we really have this benefit of COVID of getting this a literally whole new customer. But also I want you to think about it, your same customer also changed. So some people went into COVID married and came out divorced, some, right? So now you got maybe someone ready for new adventures and ready to play. Or you had people like a traditional hardcore outdoor couple, right, that were kind of like did everything from climbing to whitewater kayaking. They went into COVID with a two-year-old and came out with a, you know, three-and-a-half-year-old and a new baby, and now they're, they've got a, a pull-behind trailer, and their, their behaviors have absolutely changed. So, so it's, it's not just a completely new customer, but you've got a changed customer. It may be someone in a completely different stage of life. So just keep that in mind. Um, here, this just tells you for across these three core retail channels that we're able to look at is what is the size? Apparel still is 55% of the volume. Footwear, 20% of the volume. Equipment, um, again, to look at these double digits, I mean, I think we just all need to celebrate this because how many years have I stood on this stage and had to say equipment sales are terrible? They're bad, here are the bright spots. Now equipment is the bright spot. Accessories is still lagging as, as we um, are getting back to travel and school. So when we kind of look at it, it still is all about the outdoor lifestyle. And then it's even more about the outdoor lifestyle. So your customer, your consumer who's buying, but it's about sweats and knits and active pants. It's about footwear, hiking, and running. Um, equipment, everything, camp chairs, kayaks, coolers, tents, PFDs, you, you name it. If it's going to help us get out there, it, somebody's buying it. And when we look at accessories, really the bright spot when we get their accessories is sunglasses have come back. They kind of lagged in the middle of COVID, but I think now that people are able to walk into a store and put on a pair of sunglasses, that's catching up real quickly. Um, here, now you're not going to be able to read all this. I told you there's that QR code to get the trend sheet. This is taking that $24, $25 billion in sales and sorting it by the largest category, which is road running shoes. That's up 22%. The three, now what this is, is the top 20 categories in dollars sold. What I've highlighted are the three categories in the top 20 that are down. Now, that's remarkable. And I think we, we want to celebrate that, right? It's been a tough year. It's been a tough more than a year. 
Um, but let's celebrate that things are moving. Yes, we know there's supply chain problems. We know we're trying to get the inventory into the stores. But this is your consumer saying, we're buying and we're voting with our dollar, our wallets. So look at this. I mean, this is from road running shoes, active t-shirts, socks, caps, footwear, sweatpants, camp chairs, again, sunglasses. So we're looking at that. You're looking at three categories that are down. So now we're going to just dive a bit deeper into equipment and accessories. So I put together the backpacks, the luggage, and all of the outdoor equipment, the hiking, camping, climbing equipment sorted this by dollar sold. Again, I've highlighted the categories that are down. Normally, we'd be highlighting the categories that are up. And as you can see, not only are they up, but every, uh, every single category that's up on here is up in very high double digits. So we're looking at this as 12 months ending May, and we thought, hmm, some of these categories aren't going to transfer over to, to, to this year in growth. I mean, rec kayaks still up 26%. Camp chairs, just in this core business alone, it's an almost $300 million category, up 72%. Soft-sided coolers, um, you know, a little bit more moderated, but we're still looking at a 36% growth there. Um, we're looking at shelters, tents, etc. I mean, you just keep going on and on. I'm going to go to the next 20 categories. Again, I've highlighted what's down on this. So... Um, Hitch racks, range finders, snowshoes, headlamps, etc. All of these are up. So what's down? Climbing shoes on this. Again, gyms were closed, so that's a category that's lagged. Um, caps and lids. Again, for your water bottles, if you're if you if you're not if you're not going to work, not going to school, and not traveling, you probably bought less water bottles. I'm going to kind of move back here. You can see you had the everyday lifestyle backpacks and duffel bags and water bottles. That, that really s suffered and that will start to come back as we move back. We talk about, um, again, this is more. I'm just going to the next 20. And I'm, I'm just going to keep, I'm going to kind of skip through this. But I mean, this is sleeping bag blankets. This is, I mean, we just keep going on and on and on. Now, this is more. So we've got more equipment categories. Again, I've highlighted what's down here. So what's up? I mean, if you said what's selling, everything, right? Right now, if you can get it on the shelf, it's, it's selling. Um, and it keeps going. Here's, I'm just keeping going in, you know, in the order. So here, again, highlighted what's down. As you can see, every time I go through top 20, you've got two or three categories that are down. So kind of moving along and saying, what do these top sellers look like? Every image you have here is the top seller in the category. Um, so camp chairs, that's your top selling product in this business. Category is up 73%, and the average selling price is up 15%. You'll kind of see that trend. Um, stand up paddle boards, average selling price is up 14%. Kayaks, average selling price up 12%. Canoes, 38%. Hard sided coolers, 6%. PFDs up 22%. So you see this across the board with the average selling price. Again, all the images are of the absolute top selling product in that category. We go to optics, and you again see the average selling price is up across the board, with the exception of um, pots and pans, where that is flat. So the hot topic and, and the thing that is our biggest challenge, and we all know this, is inventory. So this is taking boats. And this is what you're looking at as you're looking at 2018. You don't need to look at the granular detail, but if you look at the far end, the very, very low bars there, that's May of 2021, that sales to stock ratio. It has never been lower. So now when I look at a category and I see a brand either going down or going up or I see something weird in a category, the very first thing we do is go look at inventory. What happened? Is, is there out of stock inventory? So right now we, we know that. We know it's even getting worse with the marathons being announced um, that they're starting up in the fall. All runners are rushing out to buy the shoes because they're worried they're not going to be, their shoe that they run in isn't going to be available this fall. So again, this is going to be a constant problem. It's going to be a constant challenge. Um, and then it's going to be really kind of where we look at it in our perspective. And if you kind of say, well, how could NPD really help us? It's starting to look at this and saying, 
where are sales dropping, where are sales increasing, where is their inventory, where is their not, and, and really trying to figure this out because, I mean, this, this isn't something any of us can predict, but it's something that we can watch and start to say, when are things slowing, what's happening, is it because of inventory or because of consumer demand? So looking at outdoor apparel, the lifestyle category, what I've done is I've taken the categories, and here I've given you year over year, so 12 months ending May 2021, and compared to two years ago. So your top percentage, so if we look at shorts, up 6% year over year, but comparing to 12 months ending in 2019, you've got a 4% increase. So you can kind of see the categories that have been up all along the categories year over year that are catching up, um, and then the categories that are kind of accelerating here. These again, images are all the top sellers and growth items in the category. So you can start to see that the, the business is also shifting a little bit. Um, you know, there's sometimes, uh, you know, I've, it's been all, almost like a one brand um, vision up here when we start to look. And this is um, the specialty business. So we've ta I've taken sporting goods out and just kind of dived into specialty. And so you're starting to see same outdoor lifestyle. You're just seeing, and, and the reason why I put the image up there, particularly of sweatshirts, is the sweatshirts we're talking about in the outdoor business are very different than what we're talking about if we're looking at sweatshirts in Walmart. Um, outdoor footwear. So these are, again, every image is gonna be top sellers. Um, I had to put also that image because when we talk about fashion shoes in this core business, again, this is outdoor specialty. <laughs> so uh, just as an aside, if you know me, I've been doing this for 22 years. Um, and one of my friends was one of the original um, kind of uh, the original founders of Crocs. And he came up at a trade show a gazillion years ago and said, look at these new shoes I have. And I was like, oh, God bless you. Let's go. I'll buy you dinner. So <laughs> prove me wrong there, right? A million times, like literally. I'm like, this guy is always successful at what he does, but I need to buy him dinner this time. Um, <laughs> fast forward 20 years later. And um, what, you know, what can't, couldn't we get fast enough is the comfort shoes. But you see, here's trail running. Now, I also provided you the year over year and two years ago. So you can see those categories that even started accelerating and categories that are catching up here. Um, and then here's categories that aren't up. But I put the top sellers here to give you a visual within outdoor specialty. Again, what are the top sellers in these categories? Um, so kind of like to, to really kind of wrap it all up, you've heard a lot today, you heard a lot from Matt, you heard about the new consumer, you heard about e-commerce accelerating, we've looked at these top sellers, we've looked at what, what people are buying, but when we really kind of stopped to think about it, last year was like people just bought, and, and Dirk, Dirk and I were talking about this, and, and he really brought up like this, this point of... Um, he called it slow thinking, slow decisions and fast decisions. So last year, you're just like, I just have to get out of the house, get me a bike, right? I'll take any bike, just get me the bike. Or I need to get the trailer because, you know, we don't want to stay in a hotel. We want to go visit our friends or whatever. Now what you have this year is, is what Dirk, you know, was talking about with those slow decision makings of I've made these investments, whether it's a camper or a trailer or a kayak or... Um, whatever it may be, a new bike, a new fly rod. So really what you start to see this year, and you saw from Matt Powell's statistics up there with the national parks, is people are starting to thoughtfully say, I'm going to explore America. So you, know, you see families traveling, uh, maybe it's a single mom with her kids. I just was, um, we have a place in, in Saratoga, Wyoming, and a, and a family of 12 drove from Newport News, Virginia, and I said to Saratoga, Wyoming, and they said, no, we're going to Yellowstone. But again, it was the big family trip. So now you're starting to see why those purchases continue, because people are now making those thoughtful plans, the longer plans, how am I going to use those big ticket items that I sort of panic bought last year just to get out of the house. So really, that's going to continue, that epic family adventure. So these are things that, as you kind of think about your new customer, how can you help them? There's a gentleman sitting right here in the second row, David, 
um, who told me, I know he's looking down, so I had to get his attention. He literally said he owns probably one of the best fly shops in the country and said, the day I stopped selling fly rods and started selling fly fishing, my business completely went up. So think about that. Are you selling that adventure? Are you helping people get to that activity? And I think, what did you say? Are you teaching that activity? Are you helping people learn? And I think that's really the biggest so what in this because it's, it's who is that coming through the door now? How is that either that person I knew has changed or I've got someone new walking in? Um, mobility, super duper important. Like that's my solo stove. That's how we basically got through this fall of COVID and winter. Um, we ended up with two solo stoves after that because we could move that thing around, but it's the mobility. So we look at this and we saw hitch racks are up. Um, we saw kayaks are up. We really look at this. This is one of my very good friends who never was the exact opposite of an outdoor person. I think she never, I don't think she even wore flats in her entire life. Like we're talking like the giant Louis Vuitton purse and high heels, the whole thing. She bought an e-bike, that's her e-bike and that's her friend's e-bike. And literally, what, what triggers that? So you start to say, why is hitch racks going up? This is how they were getting there. All she does, now she is, and, and, and she bought it to keep up with this guy she was dating who was a hardcore mountain biker. Now, guess what? She could care less. Like, she's going to go on, she's going to do it. But that e-bike was really interesting because it was the great equalizer. It allowed her to do it, allowed her to get out there, and allowed her, like, honestly, she was terrified of it. She was terrified of the trail. If, so again, remember you've got people coming in that are learning, right? They're, you now can take them through that journey. You might have a customer for the next 15 or 20 years if you start to say, how can I listen to you on this journey? What do you need now? How can I help you? How can I teach you? So I just wanna show you as we wrap up a couple remarkable statistics. So, <laughs> And, and Dirk, back there against the wall, Dirk and I would go to this, this e-bike um, like e conference that was like three tables, small group, this tiny little category. It was like 20-some million. Then I remember we were like, yay, it's 36 million. Guess what happened? COVID happened, and now it's a $700 million category that is almost the same size as road bikes. I mean, that is remarkable. That is remarkable. So these things happened while we were, I don't know, while we were all doing, uh, we were on Zoom calls. Um, <laughs> so this happened. Now this is also remarkable. And this just gives you this perspective outside of our own and outdoor of a new consumer. Golf grew in one year over $2 billion in retail sales. And what we track for golf, what NPD tracks, we don't track golf specialty. We're not tracking green grass. We're not tracking golf specialty. This is sporting goods, e-commerce, mass. It's really important. When you see golf clubs, if you dig in, golf clubs are up 75, 76%. That isn't somebody who's been doing this a million years and knows what they're doing and is buying super high-end golf clubs. So when Matt's saying that, these are new consumers. You start to look, people are like, it's shorter courses, it's family, it's friends, it's younger people. There's a whole new customer thinking about your activity in a different way. And it really, so here, we talk about mobility. Stand up paddleboard sales, right? We were like, yeah, that was kind of over a few years ago, uh, not. Up 78%, but when we drill it down to inflatable stand up paddleboards, they're up 134%. People say, I'm gonna do it, but I need to, be able to carry it and do it by myself. So again, where's the ceiling? I mean, let's just talk about the elephant in the room. Everyone wants to know where's the ceiling, when's it gonna end, and I can't tell you that, I don't know. What we can do is we can watch it, right? Right now it's so crazy because we've got the supply chain problems, how long is this consumer demand? Um, I'm really happy that retailers, when you ask them that question, they've said two to three years. That's great because if there's anybody that tends to be more like Matt, the glass half full, it might be s retailers, sorry guys. And then I tend to be like super positive, yeah, this is gonna go on forever. Um, where's the ceiling, we don't know. But 
One thing, I was fly fishing in Wyoming um, about a month ago. It turns out this guy that I was fishing with was owned a specialty retail store in a university town. So we're fishing and we're talking and I'm asking him, you know, and they, his store sold bikes and outdoor gear and climbing gear and they were a really hardcore store. Like, you know, they've been in business a super long time. And, you know, we're talking and he's like, yeah, this is great. This is a, and I'm like trying to get something interesting out of him. And, you know, and I'm like, well, what's remarkable? What's happened just besides sales, you know, being very strong? And then he thought, he said, well, you know, before COVID, I thought I knew my customer. I'm like, oh, that's boring. Like, it was like the boringest comment. I'm like, I'm not going to get anything out of him. So I'm like, so I thought about it for a while. Caught a couple of fish, and I said, what do you mean by that? And he said, well, he said, I, you know, I'm in a university town, and before COVID, I would have told you that my store, if I wasn't in a university town, I wouldn't have any customers, and I have to shutter my doors. My store would not exist. He goes, but the university, no students have been around for well over a year, and my business is booming. So I really thought, you know, I still didn't think it was that interesting, but it, I've stuck with me and I've thought about it. And it was really, it's really true. Like before COVID, what we thought, then COVID happened and then it changed. So again, is it a new customer? Is that customer changing? Is that same person, that same customer, just a different person now? So again, I think we have to just say, okay, we don't know where the ceiling is, but how can we start to learn and engage this new customer. Even if it's the same person, what's their next five-year journey, their next 10-year journey, et cetera? Um, you know, we're coming out of it, and I think it's now starting to say, where can we help you? Where's that information gap? Um, David, who I'm picking on over here, Dave, <laughs> he has to raise his hand, he's embarrassed. But um, um, he, um, he went and said, okay, well, what's keeping people from going fly fishing? People that are new to fly fishing, um, that might be intimidated, that don't know. He said, well, they don't know where to go. So on his website, he literally listed 66 different places within X amount of, of time from his a drive from his store where they could go. So he starts saying, what is that barrier? Why? What's going to keep someone from going to the next step to learning more? What's going to make them drop it or keep it? How can I start to teach that activity? So really, I just wanted to leave you that with that food for thought. This is the next cusp. That's my nephew there, the guy with the trout. He's 12 years old. I made him fly out from LA, sent him to fly fishing camp for the week, caught the biggest fish at camp, and now, again, new customer for life to any fly fishing store ever, right? I mean, absolutely, like 100%. But there's like, each week they run 14 kids through that camp. Again, you said, again, it doesn't seem like a lot, but that's a lot of customers. Plus, that's a lot of parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles in that fly shop at the beginning and end of every day buying stuff. Um, and then this is... Uh, Laura Hills, for, for some of you that know, she works at NPD, but she and her husband, hardcore outdoor people. But again, what happened in COVID? They didn't want to like um, fly, they didn't want to drive, they didn't want to stay in hotels, they bought a trailer. Now, not only do they have that cute little girl, but a brand new baby. So their entire habits as outdoor hardcore enthusiasts have entirely changed. So you've got just, you've got new customers. So really the thought is how are we going to engage them? Um, if you want more information, um, come up to our booth. Our booth is up there. We'll all be there. Um, again, those QR codes will give you the trend sheet. Talk to any of us. Um, I encourage you, Dirk is back there. Talk to Dirk. He will give you um, just endless perspective on the different marketplaces. So thank you guys so much for coming this morning and have a great show. Thanks.